Jonah pouts over Nineveh. Jonah chapter 4. So we all know the story of Jonah, and there's so much in Jonah that we could actually do. We could do uh, Jonah chapter uh, 2, where he gets swallowed up by the by the great fish and how that points to the resurrection. That's very good. It's, it's uh, probably the best thing that we could do, right? And how he calls out to the Lord, and we could do the shipwreck scene and all of this sort of stuff. But I'm going to jump all the way to uh, Jonah chapter 4. And if you remember, uh, Jonah was called uh, to be a prophet to uh, the people of Nineveh, to the Ninevites. Uh, and he didn't want to do it, and that's why he was trying to uh, go as far uh, west as he could in the Mediterranean and sail away, and he got thrown into the ocean and all that sort of stuff, and then spit up on dry land, and reluctantly he goes, and he finally gets into uh, Nineveh, and I think it's Nineveh chap- uh, sorry, Jonah chapter 3, where he preaches, and I... Uh, it depends on what you think, but I think this was actually his his actual uh, uh, sermon. He just goes into the middle of the city and says, uh, yet uh, so many days and uh, Nineveh shall be destroyed, right? Uh, and that's it. And then he just walks out and he, he wants to do a horrible job, a horrible, uh, the worst job possible preaching because he doesn't want the Ninevites to be saved and he knows who Yahweh is. And wouldn't you know, at the end of chapter three, the Ninevites are saved. And then you've got uh, Jonah sitting there in chapter four, and he's angry and he's pouting and he yells at, at God. He says, see, this is why I didn't want to go here, uh, because I knew that you were gracious and I knew that you would save these people. And when you hear that, it's just mind boggling that somebody would think that way. But I don't know. I've probably been there before, right? Goodness. Actually, I know that I have. Uh, I know that I believe that there are certain people uh, who uh, I don't think deserve uh, redemption. And I don't think they de- deserve forgiveness. And I don't think that they deserve uh, a word from our Lord uh, that's gracious and loving and speaks of salvation. Um, and this is exactly uh, where Jonah was. Uh, and maybe we should uh, take a look at Jonah because uh, in chapter four, he, he pouts and he goes outside and he wants to see what happens to the city, even though it, though he knows exactly what's going to happen to the city. Uh, and uh, the Lord sets up this big uh, uh, plant to grow up miraculously and shade him. And Jonah's so happy. And then the next day, the, the sun scorches the plant and the plant dies. And Jonah's so sad and he's angry and he, and he wants God to just kill him for so many different reasons. One, because now he's hot and and sunburn. Uh, but the other is because uh, Yahweh uh, kind of made him go preach salvation uh, to the Ninevites, and, and he just can't uh, can't stand that. Uh, and, and Yahweh comes down, and, and he just uh, chastises Jonah, as he should, as he should chastise us too when we think this way. Um, you are uh, more concerned about the death of a plant that uh, I caused up to grow up, and, and you had nothing to do with and it's just a stupid plant, Yahweh says. Uh, you're more concerned with that and sadder about that dying than you would be about an entire city uh, uh, being eternally judged when I have salvation for them. Maybe we should think about that a little bit. And maybe we should think about uh, the salvation of our Lord uh, is, is for everybody. Um, it's for all people, even the people we don't like, uh, especially the people we don't like, and especially the people that we don't think deserve it, which, when it comes down to it, is actually us. Thanks be to God.